And you can see I got the new air filter in. I changed the spark plugs already. I'm gonna get ready to take off the serpentine belt, put the new one on. And I figure, you know, today I'll just do like the brakes and the tie rods. But then I'm like, you know what? This is the one with the bad lower control arm that has the bad ball joint. And it makes no sense to just come in here today and do some of the work and then put the wheel back on it and come back in a different day to do this. All right, guys, so I'm just about done here. As you can see, we got the new rotor installed, new pads, new hardware kit as well as uh, the little rubber boots that go inside of here. All this stuff is brand new. Make sure to clean up all the rust where I needed to. I sandblasted the caliper bracket so where the pads ride back and forth. Uh, that metal is absolutely uh, clean, like a brand new piece of metal. Uh, let's see, we got our new outer tie rod, new stabilizer link, and our new lower control arm. Everything has been torqued down already. So it's just a matter of putting the new wheel on it. a new wheel we don't have a new wheel <laughs> it's just a matter of putting the wheels back on the car so here goes the rotor that came off of the car and if there's any doubt that this car did not want to stop this is plenty and here goes the pads you can see somebody just kept pad slapping this thing and they recently put these brake pads on here to get the front side yeah look at that mess I mean it's not as bad as the back side or the inboard side but you get the idea and yeah everyone's always looking for a quick fix i want to say like nine out of ten customers i get here whenever i tell them your car needs rotors and pads they always say well can i just put pads nobody ever wants to change the rotors because everyone knows that the rotors are the expensive part um sure pads can be kind of expensive as well but not when you're buying the cheapest pads from autozone where they're probably like 20 25 dollars and i almost forgot that i installed the new serpentine belt so it's now the next day and now I'm on the front left side as you can see. So on this side, we're also going to get almost the same thing. So we're going to get new rotor, new pads, new outer tie rod, new stabilizer link. And someone went crazy with the zip ties here. So I'm just going to go ahead and trim the zip ties. And uh, oh, it's getting a CV shaft. You can see how that is torn open inside of there. And here's the other side of the rotor on the front left side. Not much contact area where the pad is actually touching the rotor. I'm ready to pull out the CV shaft, but one thing I noticed is that this ball joint is actually bad right here. And I did not notice it. I didn't buy a new part and that sucks because uh, right now would have been the ideal time to change this ball joint. You can see it, this one just bolts in. So it would have been super easy right now that everything's taken apart. Now this one doesn't actually have play. It wasn't bad like the other side. That's why I didn't immediately notice it. But what's going on with this is you see nothing's connected to the knuckle here, not even the tie rod. So as I'm trying to rotate it, I could feel all these stiff spots where it just kind of locks up and binds. So it's bad in the aspect that there's so much crud inside of here that it, the ball joint can't really do what it's supposed to do. It's not bad like the other side of where the joint is loose. Um, and yeah, I don't have a new part. So I guess that'll just go onto the list and we'll knock it out next time. Really sucks because I'm in here right now. I got the first half of the CV shaft out of the car and I made sure to take it out very carefully not to drop any of the bearings and just left it all together right there because the cup itself which is right here was stuck onto the transmission pretty good. I had to get my slide hammer and a pair of vice grips on the end of it and really clamp down on this cup and yank it out of there. Um, and the reason why I took this out carefully and try not to lose any of the bearings or anything like that is because there's times where these things just don't want to come out and if they don't come out well you got no choice but to put it back together even if the boots all messed up yeah i'm really glad this thing came out but it sure did put up a fight so let's go ahead and pop in a new one all right so i got the new outer tie rod installed new stabilizer link and this thing is pretty much ready to get pulled out of the garage um there's still more work to do on it, but I got other cars lined up that has to go first. This one's not going to be driven for at least a month or so. So I got plenty of time to work with it, but I got cars that have to be done immediately lined up. So I'm going to start pulling in other cars. We're back with this Dodge Durango. You guys remember this one, right? Yeah, I know you guys remember this one. <laughs> don't want the brake issues, the warped rotors, and the lock, locked up caliper. So I don't know, it's probably maybe a month after I did that initial work. And now it's back for the front right upper control arm. So we're gonna go ahead and get this thing changed out. 
I got the upper control arm off of this Durango. The two nuts that you gotta take off from the engine bay are a real pisser to get to. So one of them is underneath uh, this whole assembly right here. With an extension, you go underneath here with a 18 mil and you could reach it. And then the other one is back down there. But it is doable, it just kinda sucks. So here goes the old one. You can see the boots all torn on it and this ball joint's completely destroyed. Uh, so we got a new one right here. Uh, the woman that picked it up from AutoZone. Looks like the right part, finally, right? We get a correct part. Uh, so let's go ahead and put it on. So I'm racing against the, the weather here, okay? It's about to start raining. So I got the wheel back on the Durango. I got this nut right here all torqued down. You can see I marked it and that's good to go. Now the two bolts back there, they are not tightened down yet. What I'm going to do is put the guard the car put the car i'm gonna go ahead and put the car on the ground and then once the car is on the ground i'll come in from up here and tighten the two nuts for that upper control arm so i'm all done with this thing everything's torqued down everything's good to go let's take it out for a test drive it should be all set i'll tell the owner to take it in for wheel alignment will it ever get done probably not first thing i noticed is the steering wheel is pretty straight you can't even tell that suspension parts were changed on it it goes straight as an arrow and because of that, I guarantee the owner will not take it in for a wheel alignment. <laughs> but uh, yeah, there's no more clunky noise coming from the front right side. The truck is just nice and smooth now. So that's just about it. I'm happy with it. I'm sure they're gonna be happy with it. And uh, that's it. When they dropped the car off, it belonged to the daughter, but the whole time I was in contact with the mom only. So by the time I was done with the Durango, I said, hey, uh, I need your daughter's contact information. Basically her first name, her phone number and the year make model of the car which i already had because i was working on it right so i just need the first two and she's like no no, no just put it in my name and it's this is something that i run into often specifically with guys mainly with guys okay they are just so overprotective or or i have no idea what it is but like let's just say a guy dropped off his his girlfriend's car to get work done i'm done with the car and i text him after i'm done hey i need her first name her phone number and the year make model of the car, I already have it. I need it for my records because I keep records of everyone's car that I work on. So I know who it belongs to, what I did, on what date, and exactly what I did. Just basic records. Okay. And guys are like, no, 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 put it put it under my name. I'm like, uh, but it's not your car. I remember I had one guy that he refused to give me his girlfriend's name. When I was texting him, he even just stopped replying to me. And I, I, I couldn't save it under anyone's name because he didn't even want to give me his name. So I texted him like three times. Hey, I need at least your contact information. That I need your name. If you don't want to give me her name, I need your name so I could save on my records. He didn't want to reply. He didn't want to give me a name. Just saved his number in my records. You know, like everything else, minus a name. So I got an empty spot there with no name on it. Doesn't matter. It's crazy how these guys are nowadays. And it's like, you know, they don't want to give me their daughter's phone number or their wife's phone number, their girlfriend, their sister, their grandma. Dude, I'm not trying to hit on your grandma. I'm not trying to hit on anyone. Okay, I, I work from home. I got kids. I got a wife. I'm not trying to hit on anyone. Some of these girls look like trolls out here, okay? I'm, I'm not trying to hit on anyone. I just need this stuff for the sake of my records. And it's crazy. You know, the, the jealousy of the, the insecurities of these people. Let me lower my voice. But, you know, some of these people have ridiculous names. Like, okay, you know what? You don't want to give me her name. What's your name? I'll put And so I got a guy in my records named Moon. I know that's not his real name, but I had to put his name down because that's the only information he gave me, Moon. Dre Dre. Really, do Like, your name is Dre Dre? I, mean, <laughs> I got names that just it just would make you laugh in my, in my records because people gave me, like, these fake aliases, you know? And it's like, are you kidding me? It's absolutely frustrating. And I, it's, I tell you, it's only in the hood, right? Ain't no one trying to hit on your grandma, dude. So I'm in this Ford Escape for, like, a 05 or something. Let's go for a quick drive. Yeah, not sounding really good. Basically, the front wheel bearing front left side is completely shot. I mean, this wheel wobbles like crazy. So it's like the only thing holding the wheel on is the brake caliber bracket because you won't let the rotor slide off so we have a front left wheel bearing and hub snap ring 
two front rotors and a set of brake pads. So the owner just changed the brake pads himself. Uh, like I say the day I looked at it to tell him what's wrong, he had just put new brake pads on it the day before. So you can see the rotor is sitting at a weird angle because of the bad wheel bearing and it's actually grinding up against the caliper bracket right there and that's what's causing all of this. So I told him, well, your rotors are pretty much chewed up and your new brake pads that you just put on it, garbage, these new brake pads. So that's why we're changing the brakes, even though the main problem here is a wheel bearing. You know, guys, looking at this, look, see what I see? That axle nut is not even tight. See the threads on it? And you can even, if you look towards the back, you can see a gap or where there's like a shadow. I bet you this is why this wheel bearing failed in the first place is because it wasn't torqued down properly. I don't know if the owner who came in here to do the brake pads thought he had to take this off. I have no idea. I don't know the story on it. Anyway, it doesn't really matter. We're going to go ahead and get it fixed. And you can see I'm not lying. Look at these brake pads. Brand spanking new. You got plenty of, I think that's like anti-squeal stuff, like the CRC anti-squeal stuff. Uh, basically, those brake pads are going to be glued to that caliper. <laughs> Jeez Louise. This guy did not want these brake pads to squeal. But because of the wheel bearing, he got a howling noise. As you can see, I got the hub off, use a slide hammer. And this thing, honestly, I didn't even need the slide hammer. I could have just gave it a few love taps with a small ball peen hammer. And this thing would have just fell right off. That's how easy it came out. Uh, so yeah, you can see our snap ring now, right there. So let's go ahead and remove that snap ring. So the snap ring came out, no issues at all. Very simple. This whole car is coming apart like textbook style, you know what I mean? <laughs> Step one, remove wheel. Step two, remove wheel bearing. So anyway, I noticed that the upper bolt looked different from the lower bolt, so I figured maybe it's one of those cam bolts. So what I did is I grabbed my marker and I marked its position right there and also on the strut so I could align it back up once I put it back together. But no, I take it out. It is not a cam bolt. Someone just simply <laughs> changed the bolt on it for some reason. I don't know if the old one or the original one got lost or broken and they just replaced it with this one. So... <laughs> That was funny. You had to be there. This is the same Ford Escape that uh, it came in a while ago and for, for something else I can't remember. But it had that wig wrapped around the CV shaft and we could still see pieces of it here. This must be that good Cambodian wig because this thing is holding on for a lifetime. Two rings to rule them all. All right guys, so we got a round two. What was going on here was I had the old bearings still inside of here, like the ball bearings. And when I was trying to press out the wheel bearing, basically was trying to compress all of that crap inside of there. So I went ahead and removed it. That way the only thing inside of this knuckle is the uh, outer race of the wheel bearing. And now we could press directly on the race to extract it. So that should be a lot more efficient at pulling this wheel bearing out. Here goes round two. Let's see if it actually comes out this time. there we have it so I cleaned up the bore real good got all the corrosion out of there and as you can see I put some anti-seas on it not sure if it really helps but eh, why not right and I made sure to clean up 
the groove where the snap ring is going to sit so that's really important that that's nice and clean and here goes our new parts now i did order oem ford parts let's see the box here i'm using the old box here to house all of our old balls yes it's a box of balls guys so where is this label at uh right there so this kit came with a new hub new wheel bearing new axle nut and a new snap ring so i got the new wheel bearing in place and i'm using a large uh, plate on the front you really want to push on the outside of the race don't push on the inside guts or the inner race uh, to press the new wheel bearing in so make sure you're using something flat that really touches the outside race um, i got another large plate on the back side because you just want to be on the outside of the knuckle remember we're trying to pull it in uh, so yeah everything's looking pretty good gave it a spray of some penetrating fluid just to hopefully help it and uh let's start pressing this thing in now of course you don't want to give this thing the full salsa right from the very beginning you just want to get it started and make sure that that wheel bearing is going in straight you can probably tell right now that it's not straight but let's uh let's get it started and see what it looks like and i could already see it straightening out it's going in super easy. Now it's not completely in yet, but our plate has hit the knuckle right here. So we're going to have to change what we're doing. Now we're going to have to switch over to a plate that fits the outer race of the wheel bearing perfectly. You can't have one that's big like this. So I'm just going to use the old race as an example. And this one fits perfectly. See that right there? But I have another one here that also fits, but it's slightly smaller, but it is touching the outer race. And because I don't want to risk uh, pressing my tool into the knuckle and possibly getting it stuck, I'm going to start off with the smaller one. Alright, so we're looking pretty good. Let's go ahead and finish pressing it in. Alright, I want to say that's all the way bottomed out. Fully pressed in. Everything's looking really good. We could grab our brand new snap ring and put this in right now. So here's where I have a decision to make. You can see on the right side we have the OEM part, the Ford part. And on the left side we have the snap ring that came off of the old wheel bearing. Look at the design difference. You can see that one actually has a hose to grab it with a snap ring. And this one does not. Sorry guys, I'm not a fan of these. I don't like them. It's uh, it's just more of a pain in the butt to deal with. I just want to clean up the one that came off of the car and we'll go ahead and uh, put it back on. I got the snap ring in place as you can see right there. So what I'm going to do is spray the snap ring with some CRC just so in the future it doesn't completely rot away and then become impossible to remove sometimes. So snap ring is in place. We are good to press in the hub. Now, whenever you're doing this, you want to make sure you support the inner race now, not the outer race. So I have a small plate inside of here and it's supporting that inner race on the wheel bearing because if you don't do this, you're going to end up just pressing all the guts out of the wheel bearing. And it looks pretty good. I'm gonna go ahead and spray the new hub with some CRC right now. That's good enough. Now let's go ahead and put the new rotor and pads on it. And once I get the brakes installed, I'll go ahead and torque down the axle nut to the correct torque specs. As you can see, I got my screwdriver jammed inside of here and I already torqued down the axle nut. I had to pull out tiny for this one. Actually, before we go out for a test drive, here I am on the front right side, and look at this. Release the goo. Yeah, this guy went happy with that stuff, but what I wanted to point out was this right here. See that? 
on these forwards there should be like little black plastic caps like this they go right inside of here and all four of them are missing so the two on this side and the two on the driver's side they were all missing i managed to find one in my collection and i put it on the driver's side but that's about it i don't have any more here goes another one i found but it doesn't fit you can see it's clearly way too large for this uh, type of car so that's not gonna fit anyway i just wanted to point out that all four of them are missing and these things were all probably here when the owner first did his brake job and he probably decided ah it's not important i'm not gonna put them back on actually they are important okay but now we don't have them so let's just go ahead and fix this mess all right so look at this look at this this anti-squeal stuff how did he apply this with a freaking super soaker how i just this doesn't make sense <laughs> I guarantee you this anti-squeal stuff was on the friction material where it makes contact with the brake pads. Seeing the type of mess he has here, yeah, this thing made its way onto the friction material. I, I just, I, I don't know guys, okay? I guess it's one of those situations where if you got nothing nice to say, don't say anything at all, right? So this side is all set. You can see new rotor, new pads. All the corrosion was cleaned off where the pads go. And we got our kink out of our brake hose, so that's good. And this thing's pretty much ready to go. Let's go for that test drive. So the owner asked me if I do fuel tank straps. So let's go have a look at this. Look at that. Well, that's definitely a strap, right? That's funny. Um... The old one is still right here. It didn't even bother taking it out. You know, that's where you run into your issues. Doing a job like this is when those bolts don't want to come out. They're just rusted in place. So that's the reason why I told him I'm not going to touch this, even though it seems like a relatively straightforward job. But, you know, if those, uh, if those bolts don't want to come out and whatever the hell they're threaded into, let's just say it's a welded on nut from the backside. If that, if it breaks the welds when you're trying to extract that bolt or another issue is if that head just rounds off or snaps off on that bolt, you're in for a world of pain. You know, it's not going to happen. <laughs> so that's why I told him, nope, not touching this. All right. So it's better. No more wheel bearing noise. The brakes feel decent. Um, I mean, we got that Ford Thunder going. You hear that bad boy? That's horsepower. Now this thing's not even moving. <laughs> this thing is as fast as molasses. <laughs> I don't know guys, there's just something about this truck that just uh it's like badass. You know what I mean? Just driving through the hood, swerving, not caring what people think of you and just vroom, giving it that Ford Thunder. Makes you look manly, rugged. <laughs> You know what? Let's go ahead and park this turd before the gas tank falls off. 